Servants Heart. Servants Heart. Welcome to the podcast. Inspiration, motivation, take. Servants Heart. Listen to the podcast. We're all about to talk about life. Our guests will share their life story. We want you to success in life and business. We're ready and we will start shortly. We're gonna talk about life. We're going to speak on business. You're gonna shine bright. We are going to witness business with our servants' hearts. Servants heart. With hosts Steve Ramon and Ray. Ramona. Inspiration, education, talks. Welcome, everyone, to Doing Business with the Servants Heart Podcast. I'm your host, Steve Ramona. I am so thrilled to have you join us today. This podcast is dedicated to exploring the idea of doing business and living life with a purpose, serving others, and yes, achieving success. We believe we make our we approach our work and our lives with a servant's heart mentality. We can truly make a difference. We created this show for you because we want everyone to be motivated, inspired, and educated to make an impact in your world. And that keyword is your. Let's start there and let it massively grow. Hey, whether you're an entrepreneur, super successful, or just looking for purpose in your daily life, we're here to support you and help you and help you grow. My guest is going to blow you guys away. This guy, not only is he dressed handsomely, but he knows everything about money. And as you all know, I love talking about money in a different way than you think. So while you're listening today, I want you to think about how you're going to serve today and what impact will you create today. And I keep saying today because... You wait till tomorrow, a month goes by, you go, I haven't done it yet. Start today. And that's anything, but with a servant's heart, start that right away. I want to thank my phenomenal partner, Pantheon Alliance, my sponsor today. Imagine being part of an exclusive exclusive community of high-income, successful business owners and entrepreneurs from very diverse industries, growing, growing their thought leader platform to build and make an impact in the world. If you want to learn more, just reach out to me and I'll get you more information on Pantheon Alliance. With that being said, my quick monologue is money. We all need it. We all have it. Some a lot, some a little. But what my guest is going to talk about, how you work with money and and the mindset of money, which I think is the most important thing. I think poor people don't have a good mindset. Rich people do. It's kind of that simple. I know it's more complex than that. Jake, I want to welcome to your show. I'm so excited to have you on. Steve, I'm excited to talk to you today. Uh, Thank you. Money mindset. Jump into that. Yeah, you brought up a couple of good points. And with almost all of our clients, Steve, every time we meet with them, I want to ask, and I want to hear what you have to say, actually. I want to hear, why is money important to you? I can what make a change in the world. More abundance means I can serve and, and be generous with others. Yeah, fantastic. And, and that is unique to you, and it, it kind of aligns with your greater purpose and your bigger thing. So what's fascinating is uh, at my company, Falcon Wealth Advisors, we have approximately 800 clients. So I get to ask, I have this large sample size and money is fascinating. So for some people, it helps buy them time. Some people, it's about their faith, right? Or their family, it's a legacy, right? It's helping their community. But regardless, every, you know, it's a lot of, some people say money's not important to me or, or I hate money, right? And so what I'm getting at is we all have a relationship with money, whether we like it or not. And we all have ingrained values or the way that we were brought up around money. And what we try to do, what's, which is a little bit makes us a little bit different at Falcon Wealth Advisors, is that we want to explore your relationship with money so that we can help you ultimately build a financial plan that is aligned with your values and then take the actual dollars and cents and make sure they are allocated and invested according to what's important to you. Not what's important to me, but what's important to you. And so I love that we started that because it's one of the most powerful questions that I ask my clients when we meet with them. And I love that you asked because I've met a lot of advisors. I told you at pre-show before we were talking and customizing my financial plan or whatever you call it in different words is all tied to me and my purpose. So once you find that out, you can take off from there. Exactly. It's so important. And not to pick on advisors, but there's hundreds of thousands of us out there, right? And so you have to be careful is that I think a lot of times because of the volume of meetings is that some advisors try to fit clients in molds too often. And it's like, look, Steve, if, you know, if yours is with, you know, your servant heart, I would, you know, if you were a client, I would go deeper and explore more of that and say, okay, 
So what does that mean? And, and what does it take for us to accomplish that for you? And, and dig into that because, and I think that'll help people have a better relationship with money. If they understand, well, this is what's important to me. And this is what this guy's asking me and, and explain that and dive into it. So it's, it's very important. And I just want to encourage people not to get, whether you're an advisor listening to the show or you're a client of an advisor is to make sure that you're having this unique conversation with your advisor. It's somewhat personal conversation exploring why money is important to you. It's good. Audience, this guy's really, really good. And I'll tell you why. You, know, I'm not even your client. You're not even talking to me. I'm already thinking about what am I doing with money. That is good. so powerful. And, and it's, yeah, it's, and it kind of known, you can tell my answer really quick. So if somebody doesn't have a purpose and can't find that, what do you do with them? Yeah, that's a good one. And that's, you know, that is common also, Steve. And yeah. so we want to go out there and there's exercises you can do, right? You can just start listing out what do you value generally, right? Just, and a lot of people, believe it or not, don't take time to do this. So write down your values or what's important to you. And, and then we can even provide you a list of 50 words that maybe come to mind. And, and we could literally, it could be this simple is you go in there and you circle the top 10 that means something to you. And then we'll ask you, we'll define that right? Define faith or define, define family, right? Or charity or whatever. Define it. Let's go deeper into that. And then we just continue to whittle that down into two or three, ultimately trying to get to a purpose. Like you so articulately said yours, like it's just finding that, what getting to that core issue. But there are definitely exercises that we can do to drill into that because a lot of people don't know. And what's, what's awesome about this though, that relieves some of the pressure is that your purpose or your values with money can change over time, right? My, my relationship with money is way, I'm 43 years old, way different than when I was 23 or 33, right? It's changed. I'm married now, you know, I've got a mortgage. It's a completely different outlook than when I was 23, you know, just getting out of college or whatever. So it, it changes and that's okay. So there's not that much pressure. You have to understand that it, that it can and will change over time. You read my mind because I was just going to ask you your purpose. I'm 63. Yeah, 23. I had 68,000 in the bank. I thought it was a won the lottery. Probably spent half of it blowing it doing good because 23, you know, you think you're invincible. I love right. what you just said. Now, if you're working with somebody, this is the pre. So they're not a client yet, correct? When you're Potentially, doing yes. This? I mean, what, what's great, of, I think, is an added benefit for our clients is we don't do this once, though. But yes, it's both. So We'll do it initially when we first meet with someone, but clients, we want to check in on it. So we don't, we don't yeah. end it there. Yeah. yeah. So I want to ask, and this, I think I know the answer to this. If, if it's not a, like, I'm not a fit for your company, you've done all this work. You're not going to go, Hey, you, it's a hundred dollars for spending an hour with me, finding your purpose. You're developing this and you might not get a client. Out of it. Yeah. I think it's stupid to charge people to, cause who am I to sit? I mean, I'm not sitting on my high and mighty chair saying, Oh, my 30 minutes or my hour is so important. You're going to have to write me a check. No, 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 no. That's stupid. Yeah. I don't think, I know advisors do that and I don't think they should. I think, I think advisors do that, Steve, just to make themselves feel and look more important than they are. What's like we talked about before we started airing, what's 30 minutes of your day. And in the end, somebody walks out of my office or we drop off a zoom call or a phone call and they have something to think about, or they have a better relationship with their purpose or values or money then that's awesome for me, right? And, and you know what? Sometimes it's better that they don't become a client because they may need to go work through some issues and do some things. And that's completely okay with me and my team. And said, I, I got asked this, one of my first interviews, you know, I have my own company now, but I, I started in this business working in another company. And the interview, they said, why are you getting into this business? And I'll never forget it. I think, you know, I was in my early to mid twenties. And I said, I want to help people, number one. And the person interviewing me said, that's a great answer. If you keep that, mentality throughout your career, you're going to be successful. Because I think what happens is, you know, of course, everyone wants to say that maybe it's cliche, but then people start making money, and then it becomes all about the money. And it's not about helping people anymore. And so I have really worked hard, not only to remind myself, it's, but to remind that to my team, that's like, look, we are all here to help people. That's why Falcon Wealth Advisors exists. And we can help someone and they not become a client. And you know what? That's okay. Sometimes that's even more fulfilling, frankly, because so oftentimes, Steve, those people need our help even more, even though they can't have necessarily afford to pay for our services. We might be able to change their life and meet with them only once or twice. And boom, they've got a completely different outlook on things. You're my kindred spirit. I, I love <laughs> that. They tell, give you away free stuff, 
I don't say spend 10 hours with somebody, but right. You can't, you I mean, know, there's only get, so much time. Yeah, exactly. A couple tips. You're not a fit for you. You move on. You don't sit in the computer screen going, Oh, I just lost a sale. No, find the next, I say next, who's the next person I can serve. Yes. How has it changed your culture? We talked about it before the show and I want the audience to hear this. You living this servant heart service mentality. How's it work with your employees and people, your team? Well, yeah, so it's, it's got to start with me. It, it has to start with me. I can't, I have to eat my cooking, practice what I preach, whatever you want to call it. So I have to come in and recognize that day in and day out. And I always joke, it's like, it's a small, if I see a piece of trash on the floor, I will pick it up, right? Uh, and having that mentality. And then just, we check in on our values. We have, we have core values at Falcon Wealth Advisors. And, we, and frankly, we measure compensation against those core values is really, that's how, that's how much we want to hold uh, accountability to it is like, look, we've all agreed that these four or five things are what are most important to us as we're working together every day. And so when we're measuring performance, it's not how much sales or whatever, like somebody brought, it's like, no, how are they in relation to the core values? Are they exhibiting what we have identified as the most important traits of a team member? And so, and again, it starts with me though. I got, I've got to be exhibiting those core values every day, or I can't ask anybody else to do it, right? Translates to every business. That's why I'm glad you said that, because whether you're a plumber, you're a business coach, if you have a team, you, you got to practice what you preach. What'd you say, eat eat your cooking? I love that. Eat, I've never heard eat that. my before. cooking. You got to eat it. Yeah, that's <laughs> the, that, I love that. So when it comes to advisors and money and companies, is it different from a personal Steve Ramona to a company doing hundred million a year is the advising, the advising consulting different. You know, I would say at the, at the core, it's not, believe it or not, the yeah. dollars mm -hmm. and the tax planning and the financial planning, of course, the investing will be different, but I, I don't care who you are. It starts with that core value and that purpose. And then we build from there. So I, I would argue that it's not that much different. I guess, again, there's going to be different strategies, but that's not what I'm talking about. It's why is money important to you? Or what do you value in having a wealth advisor? If you're going to hire me, what's set some expectations? What do you expect from me and my team? And let's get those things down. Or do you have money rules that you live by? Right. All of those things I think are, are very important at a fundamental core level. And then it will branch off and change from there. But I'd argue, Steve, it's not that much different. Just that there's more zeros, right? Or yeah. You know, but other than that, it's it's uh, fundamental. It's very important. Yeah, the purpose is purpose. Whether you hundred million dollar yes. company or make it hundred thousand a year, the purpose is, is going to be the purpose. And of course, that changes. Um, retirement. We'll talk about your book in here. Retirement. So I'm 63, so it's even more important for me. But 30s and 40 year olds, they're not thinking about that. They're thinking about their career. You know, the degree, all those different things. How important is it to start this early? Oh, it's so important. And it's so boring for them. And it drives me crazy because I've been passionate about this for my whole career as a wealth for 18 years now. And it's just the simple math. And they probably heard this before, but compound interest is one of the eighth wonders of the world. And you just save a little bit today. And then you bump that up every year and you can have millions of dollars potentially based on what numbers we're talking about. And so it's just like anything else. One of my friends who's a client told me this the other day, because I, I was, we were joking because I have a podcast, Steve, called Upticks. And I was like, tell our buddies to start watching or listening to it. And he's like, Jake, they're just like everybody else. They don't want to pay attention to this stuff. They think it's just going to magically work itself out. And he related it to people's health, that people don't want to diet. They don't want to exercise because they just think it's in the back, right? It's magically going to work out for all of us. But if you just put a little bit, I'm talking a little bit of intention towards it every week, every month, or you hire a wealth advisor who's acting as a fiduciary in your best interest. And if you don't want to deal with it and pay them, meet with them once or twice a year, it literally, it can, literally can change your life. There could be game changing decisions that these people, these professionals help you make. And there could be a huge difference. And so, yes, I don't care how, I don't care how old you are, twenties, thirties, forties, you should at least have some sort of plan in place for retirement, knowing that your purpose is going to change, right? The numbers are going to change, but that's again, why you start getting things moving and getting them going. A lot of advisors will say that a financial plan is a roadmap. I completely disagree with that. It's not a roadmap because maps typically don't change, yeah. right? But my financial plan has changed. Your financial plan, Steve, has changed, I'm sure. And so 
That's why, again, it pays to revisit it either on your own if you're a do-it-yourselfer, uh, which takes a lot of work, or you hire an advisor to help guide you along the way as your life changes. God, you are so brilliant. That is so, because <laughs> you're right. I mean, you somebody can win the lottery tomorrow, a million dollars, their, their, their whole financial plans changed. Yes, we see that we we see that so, so unexpected windfalls, career changes, babies. They have to move cars. I mean, it all it, financial plan. I think it's the dumbest thing for someone to say a financial plan is a roadmap. It's not. So don't think. And if you're 35 years old and you think you meet with a planner once and they map it all out, I'm going to tell you, you need to revisit. It's almost like a, getting a physical exam or a checkup at the doctor or your teeth cleaned or your eyes checked. Things change, right? And so does your money. So does your life. So let's not ignore it. It's, you know, it's, it's important because if you want to be financially independent, right? And you want to be uh, to a point where you don't have to change your time for money, that whatever you're doing, your time is voluntarily, even if you're getting paid for it, then you got to plan for that. It's just not going to magically happen. It's just not. No, it's no. I mean, that's why I mean, anybody, I'm not a financial guy. I know that, you know, it's just it's logical. Jake, what motivates you to have a customer first financial advising company? You know, I, I have to thank my parents for that, Steve. I, I grew up in a very blue collar household and I just, it's just hard work. I've just, and I just, I'm so thankful for my clients, especially having my own company that I fully realize that nobody's paying. My clients are my bosses, period. I work for them and anything I can do to provide more value than they're getting anywhere else from a service standpoint or in the financial services industry is what I'm going to work hard to do every day because I understand I need to earn their trust and their business every day. And I, and I even bring it into to my team. I'm like, we, I'll go over, believe it or not, company revenue with my team. And I, this morning, actually, we had a team meeting and I said, look, guys, this is our revenue. The more revenue we make, the bigger raises we can give you. And the higher, and the more talented people we can keep hiring. And I made a joke. It's like, if we have lower revenue, then we're gonna have to hire maybe somebody we don't want to hire, right? Like somebody that's not very good at their job. And everyone kind of chuckled because it's like, nobody wants that, right? And I was like, I want you guys to be able to like make good money living here. But we all have to understand that we're all working for the same boss and it's our clients. And so yeah. I, I don't produce a widget, Steve. There's nothing, my clients aren't walking out of here with a bowling ball. No, it's a feeling, it's a plan, it's confidence, and it's trust. And so we have to have, it's got to come from a servant. If I, if I talk down to them or use jargon or make them feel uncomfortable or are dishonest or, or don't display integrity, then I really have nothing. I don't have anything. And so it's very important. Money's so emotional too. So you nailed it across the board with that. Um, yeah, because it's like, you know, you buy a home. It's probably your biggest purchase ever in your life. It's not going to be, hey, I'll just get the loan, sign the paper, and hey, I got a million dollar home. No, I haven't bought a home. I've talked to many people. It's it can be stressful. And the good realtor, like with the good financial advisor, when you make a lot of money, because you can wake up tomorrow and it's gone, and that's not a right. good feeling either. So no, no, it's very important. Yeah, you said an important word. Sorry to interrupt, I, but I'm excited about this fiduciary. I get asked this a lot. What is a fiduciary financial advisor? What does that mean to me as a client? Yeah, so a fiduciary is a legal responsibility to put your client's interests ahead of your own. What's very confusing about the financial services industry is that there are still are brokers or agents out there who don't have that standard. Their standard is whatever they advise you on or, or recommend just needs to be suitable. So it doesn't necessarily need to be in your best interest, though. Now, I want to be clear here. These brokers or agents are not bad people. They're just serving up a different offer. And how about this one, Steve? To make it even more confusing, there's advisors that can be acting as fiduciaries and brokers for their clients. <laughs> so, wow. it's very, yeah, so it's very confusing. Uh, a simple question to ask your advisor is, that, are you a fiduciary with my money all the time? Right? And And, and so... Because literally, you could have two different accounts, believe it or not. In one account, they're a broker. In one account, they're a fiduciary. And so I think it's a real problem in the industry. There, there's been hints of legislation changes, but it, it gets lobbied away and it doesn't happen. So, th so there aren't changes. But I want to make it clear that it's not, there's not one that's right or wrong or good or bad. You just need it. Like when I go buy a car, I know I'm trying to get sold something. And so 
When you're working with a broker, you got to realize they're going to try to sell you something. That's what's going on here. Um, but it doesn't mean you bought a bad car. You wanted a car, you needed a car, and they got paid a commission. And that's what a broker does. And so yeah. you seem to understand that relationship. And then to carry it forward, even fiduciaries can use products. So you have to be very uh, mindful that if a fiduciary is putting you in a product, now what is that product going to charge you? And what what is that fee? And so something that sets us apart of Falcon Wealth Advisors is that we aim to avoid products. And we literally will buy and sell individual stocks and bonds for our clients because I don't want to be part of the product game either. Yeah. So right. I've really tried to make it as transparent and clean as possible so that our clients know what they're what they're really buying into. It's one of the best answers I've ever heard about fiduciary. And I'm going to use that to serve others to give them Thank a piece you. and then have them call, call you. Here, talk to the expert, which we should do. Don't give people money advice if you're not an advisor. Too right. many people are doing that. That's a Well, have you thing. seen that on social media? It's unbelievable how many people are on social media giving funny, and they're not licensed professionals. These are just random people. It's scary. Yeah. yeah, it is. And this is one of the biggest things in your life is family and money. Because we need it all, need everything. Um, you know, getting to the end here, God, there's so I've got to bring you back. This is <laughs> there's so much we can delve well, thank into. You. Um, to, so people know that you're a service, that you're successful, your company's making money and doing really well. But let's do the flip side. Talk about a story of one of your clients you work with and how you help them grow. Oh yeah, well absolutely, and lately especially. The number one thing that we think we can provide for clients from a planning perspective is tax planning. The tax code, and I, by the way, I hate the tax code and tax plan. I don't hate tax planning, but I hate that the tax code's crazy. It's so cumbersome and confusing for people. And this is my pet peeve with accountants. And then again, same thing. I don't, they're not bad people, but most accountants are rear view mirror looking. So when you go in to meet with your accountant, they're just looking at what you did in 2023 or 2024 and saying, okay, this is what you did, this is what you owe. And sometimes they'll say, you should have done this or you could have done this, but you didn't. So what we do is we don't look backwards, we're looking forwards and say, okay, this is where you are today. How can we lower your lifetime tax bill? And I just met actually before we jumped on today's podcast where, and again, this is pretty complex, but we were looking at a Roth conversion strategy, which is moving money from an IRA or 401k into a Roth paying taxes. And we modeled this out for a potential client. And Steve, the, the savings was in the millions of dollars in lifetime taxes. If they, wow. if they, yes, if this all worked out. Now, again, we haven't executed on it yet, but that is the potential savings of huge impact in this potential client's life just by literally doing some tax planning every year. And so that's that's where I think an advisor can really influence and impact clients' lives from a servant model. It's like the stock market's a stock market, right? Nobody can control that. Nobody can predict that. But hey, we know what the tax rate is today. We know what's going on. And based on today's information, we feel like you do this, this, and this, it, it'll have this impact. And then we do it every year. We don't do it. Again, it's not a roadmap. So we do it every year and we look at it. So that's just an, a, an opportunity that we identified for this potential client. So I, I love that because a lot of advisors and nothing wrong with them don't do taxes. They don't want to touch it. They don't want to deal with it, which is great. So if you if you're an advisor out there and don't want to deal with taxes, I think I have the guy for you. <laughs> right, I think I found right. one of the guys. So because yeah. that's the thing, I, real quick, I'm learning is there's so many things you could do to really say that's legit, that's le legal. It's not skirting of the rules. No, it's no, no, rules. not at all. Yeah. No, it's completely legal. Yeah, it's not some crazy weird loophole or some obscure rule. No, this is a this is the way the IRS has structured it, and, and they've uh, allowed these things, and they they've opened doors for them, and. Got to make it clear, we're not filing the return because between between us and the millions of your potential audience, I don't see the value in filing a return. I see the value in planning ahead and seeing if we could lower your future taxes because yes, it's important that you file a return and you get it accurate and, and it's done appropriately. But I want to I want to show clients like, hey, if you do X, Y, and Z, you might be able to pay less in taxes. To me, that's real value for, from our perspective, at least. Yeah, and I like that you don't go in that lane. That's not your lane. You don't file right, taxes. Right. I'm not going to file the return. No, no, no. You just find your CPA, go, hey, so you give me the information. I go to my CPA. Here's what I want you to do. Basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's great, great advice to run it by your CPA. Let them officially sign off on it. We're going to model it out and say, hey, we think you got to do this, this, and this. And we'll even work with the client CPA 
uh, you know, in conjunction saying, hey, this is what we're thinking. What are you thinking? And, and, and get some of that tax advice from the tax professional. Best money ever spent. What yeah. you just said right now, because taxes are always a stress that people you know, yeah. are trying to avoid and deal. And I got to pay this, and, you know, all that, that the audience is aware of. Um, we're coming to the end of the time. Real quick, talk about your book. I'm excited about your book. Yeah, so I'm not, I wasn't an author, but now I'm an author. And the reason I wrote the book is I just didn't, Steve, I didn't like the books out there. I read a ton. My wife is a tremendous reader. I mean, she's reading all the time, very quick reader. So she's got me reading more. And so I read financial books uh, and I didn't like any of the books. So I wrote my own. I got it right here. Retiring Right, Smart Steps for Exiting Corporate America. And it's a 150 page guide derived from thousands of meetings, right? Over 15 years. And it's not meant to be, oh, you got to do this, this, and this. It's not, it, it basically, it's to open up the awareness of some things that people need to think about as they're planning and approaching retirement. That's really what it is. It's like, hey, have you thought about this? Have you thought about this? Well, let me tell you about this. And so it's really to get the conversation going. I didn't want to make it a thousand pages and, and, and bore people because I could have. Um, so again, it's just a design to get that ball rolling and give some people some sort of something they can grasp onto as they're preparing. And it doesn't matter if you're 20, 30, 40, 60 years old. I think this book could is something that could be of use. Now, cl the closer you are to retirement, the more impactful I think it will be. But I think anybody could read it. You're talking about me. I got to read it. So audience, yeah, I'll we'll get you a copy. First. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. Yeah, and I'll put the link in the chat because the more, more you educate yourself about money, more you have a great advisor like Jake's, Jake and his team is powerful because education is power. I don't care. You know, we know that across the board for thousands of years, they've talked about it in Jesus's days. They've talked about it. Um, I've got a fun question for you. All right. Okay, so you, you reserved a table for at a restaurant. Of course, you're sitting in one of the chairs. You've got three empty chairs. Who, dead or alive, would you invite? Why? And what food would you eat? Order any. Oh, that's a really good one. Dead or alive. Dead or alive. I would have to go my wife. How about that? Huge points there. <laughs> I would go with Why my wife. Why is your wifey? You hear that? You're in. <laughs> and I would go... I would make it a fun one. I'd go Tiger Woods and Warren Buffett and my wife. <laughs> How about that? Oh, my gosh. I, I, Warren Buffett would be in mine, no doubt. I love that, man. And we, I mean, need, and we need Mexican. My, my wife is allergic to corn. So in this fictitious dinner, she wouldn't be allergic to corn. And we'd have Mexican food. And she would have wine. And I would love to talk to Warren Buffett and Tiger Woods, because I'm a golfer in finance, and my wife, who's my favorite person, right? So to support you i love what a yeah. great table that's yeah. a restaurant i want to be at um <laughs> someday my goal is warren buffett someday somewhere just because he's just the guy gets it he um, does he does so how can people support you reach out to you find you and ask more questions yeah so i'm out there i'm actually pretty active on social media so i'm out there on facebook instagram jake falcon kc i think or jake falcon you'll find me pretty easily there's not a lot of people with that name linkedin twitter uh, and then falconwealthadvisors.com is my company website. That's where you can find a lot of my content. Uh, Uptix is out there on YouTube, Apple, iTunes, and Spotify. It's a weekly podcast where my business partner, Corey, and myself discuss the latest trends in financial news and topics. Uh, so that's been a lot of fun to record um, on there. So that's probably the best way is all those, all those avenues. We're out there, though. You're going to keep me busy. i got to read your book and listen to your podcast. I'm going to do that. <laughs> it's because... Again, education is key, and he's giving it to you for free. Well, yes. you can spend fifteen bucks for a book, but that's nothing compared what you excuse me what you're going to get from the book. Yeah. Jake, thank you so so much for being a guest on this show. You've motivated me, inspired me, educated me, and I'm sure you've done with the audience. I really appreciate what you're doing, Steve. The pleasure is all mine, and hopefully the audience got something for today, and, and it was a lot of fun. So thank you. I'm sure they are. Feedback. Go to YouTube, leave feedback, leave a, a message. I'll get it to Jake. If you can't get a hold of him, reach out to me and I'll connect you with him. Uh, I've got some people I'm going to connect them with. I'm thinking in my head as well. But do that. Give us feedback on the show too. It always helps us make a better show. You know, I'm not perfect and nobody's perfect. We all want to be better. And if we can help you out and support you even more, let us know how to do that. Don't forget my TV show, Together We Serve, every Friday, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. 
uh, see my big old head on your 70 inch TV screen, but you'll look at the guests more and you'll look at me because they're going to be talking and doing all the education. With that being said, me and Jake want to thank you all so much for watching or listening to this podcast. And we'll see you on the next episode of Doing Business with a Serpent's Heart. Have a great day.